Question. What exactly is a Minecraft server? Is it a place where you and your friends chill out on? Is it a massive network that has tons of mini games that you can keep playing forever? Or is it that one weird role-playing server we all know you are playing on? Kyle? Well, to me, it's a simple software allowing people to play on the same world together. With Minecraft being almost 14 years old, it hits its puberty. Server software these days have to deal with a lot more bloat as there are a lot of different features, APIs, and they also have to reverse engineer a lot more code in order to get their software working. However, what if you wanted to have your own server? And I'm not saying load it up with 20 plugins to make it quote unquote unique, but actually make your own system with your own features, your own way of playing, and a lot more different features. Don't need an inventory system? Throw it in the trash. Don't want a public chat? Throw it in the trash. Don't want cats? Throw them in the trash. Because today's subject, Mindstorm, is the IKEA of server software. And I was lucky enough to interview their current maintainer about their project. I'm Matt. I guess I'm the maintainer now of Mindstorm. That's a bit weird. That's Matt W. And he is a real W. He's also in charge of what is, in my opinion, one of the coolest projects you'll likely never want to try. So get comfortable and let us dive into the history of Minecraft once more as I tell you the history of Mindstorm. Now I can already hear you asking your questions. Lunar, what is Mindstorm? Why are you even talking about this? I've never heard about this. Well, I'm glad you asked. Mindstorm describes itself as a complete rewrite of the Minecraft server code while being open source and without any of Mojang's actual code. And while projects like Glowstone and to an extent Sponge also try to achieve this goal, Mindstorm tries to do it a little bit more differently. See, while at the beginning, Mindstorm was just a passion project started by the mode, like many of these projects do, as its user base grew, so did its goals. I haven't heard a written out goal. I think at the beginning it was just a, although I'm sure he'll correct me after this if it's wrong, but I think it was originally just a passion project. And then uh, as more people, myself included, started working on it, it sort of formed into the, the goal it has now, which is just to be a you know framework for building a server rather than a complete re-implementation of the game. Now that word, framework, what does he mean by this? Well, Mindstorm isn't just your average Minecraft server. Like I said in the intro, you basically have to code your own features that you want to use yourself. Anything you don't need, you don't use, or anything you desperately need, you can implement yourself. As explained by Matt W himself. Could you explain in as few words as possible, what is Mindstorm? Yeah, so I guess it's best phrased, I think, as an extremely bare bones framework for building a Minecraft server on top of uh, it itself is built from the ground up without any code from Mojang. Now, what does this mean for you, the end user? Well, it does mean that you have a lot more control over what your server does. And while Purper does an amazing job of letting you tweak the settings on almost every variable in Minecraft, in Mindstorm, you don't even need to tweak it. If you don't want bats to spawn, just don't even bother coding them in. It's that simple. You know what isn't simple? The name itself. I've mispronounced this already like five times in a row as Mindstorm. What is the genius reasoning behind it? Is this some galaxy brain move to get people to mispronounce it like Starbucks does with your name? And speaking of uh, mispronouncing it a few times, who came up with this name? Yeah, it was the the original creator of the mode. It comes from a mash of the words Mindstorm and Custom. I'm sorry, Minecraft and Custom. The mine from Mindstorm comes in Minecraft and the Storm comes from the last four letters of Custom. That's... Uh, yeah, that's where it came from. My mind is truly blown. <laughs> Mine was too. Uh, yeah, no, cool. Then I, 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 I mean, if that's the combination, I don't really feel too bad mispronouncing it 16 times. Oh, uh, all right. Um, so you're telling me I'm ashamed because I mispronounced it in my iceberg video for essentially nothing because it's a stupid dad joke. Okay, one moment, please. <laughs> All right, now that my entire neighborhood has turned into that one scene from Indiana Jones, let's move on. I've talked shortly about what Mindstorm is and what you can do with it, but what actually makes a difference 
is that word again? Framework. It doesn't really mean anything on its own. And it's pretty cool that you can code everything you want into it. But why should you try Mindstorm? What is the thing that sets you guys apart? Well, I think that's a big one. I think that's sort of a double-edged sword. You know, on the one hand, it being written from scratch means that, you know, it's really easy to modify if you need to do something special. And it has a very low level, uh, like protocol, API. Um, and it's really simple. You know, there's no really complicated build system. There's no mix-ins. There's no 17 layers of abstraction or whatever paper is at now. There's no NMS. It's just, it's just there. It's simple. So I think that's sort of the thing that sets it apart and of course the result is that things take longer because it doesn't come with you know the entire server so if you want some specific behavior that came that you know that's in the the original server you have to add it and that we have the kicker if you already are doing something very specific or need a very very custom server you need mindstorm look at it this way paper and purple are like all the warhammer models you make with your instructions you follow the steps and you'll get a nicely made product in the end of it. However, the only way your server is different is the paint job that you put on top of it. But with Mindstorm, there is no manual. There are no instructions. You can mash some stuff together for what you need, with the downside being that if you don't know what you're doing and you do it wrong, you're gonna end up like Jimmy over here having a nightmare instead of a sweet, sweet ass rhino. But while that is a strong positive, it's also its biggest negative as the current maintainer says in its own words, the project is not for everyone. In your opinion as the maintainer, your very unbiased opinion, why of should course. <laughs> why should somebody use Mindstorm? Well, I'm going to give a really strange answer, answer to this, I think, uh, which is that I think most people shouldn't use it. Uh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> I was talking to somebody before this who... Uh, I didn't love this answer, but I think it is the truth. Um, you know, it's for most servers, they have a lot of mechanics from Minecraft and the effort to implement them is just very, very high on Mindstorm. Cause you know, when you, if you just sort of set up a bare bones project, what you get is uh, a blank world that you can move around in place and break blocks and that's about it. So, you know, any feature you want on top of them, what's well, like crafting or PVP or even correctly placing things like stairs, uh, you either need to implement it yourself or use an existing implementation of it. Uh, in those two cases, there is an implementation, but certainly not for everything. So I think going back to what I said earlier, it, it makes a lot of sense if your project is very far from the the original vanilla experience um but if you're aiming for something that has a lot of vanilla aspects like for example a uhc server it just doesn't make sense to put in all the time to rebuild it and you don't just get the simplicity you also i mean the performance of mindstorm is pretty significantly better than the original server but it's a really hard comparison because mindstorm has so much less going on than the original server and so it's hard to say, like, if you re-implemented everything, would all that code in between where it is now and having everything implemented actually keep it faster or would it end up being the same? Who knows? So it's it's not for everyone, but if you need something custom, this is the way to go. What you were saying. Yeah. yeah, definitely it's not for everybody, but I think if you are willing to put in some time to remake the things that you do need, you can end up with a much easier to maintain um, and probably more performant and just generally simpler uh, server implementation. Are there any things you would like to add or statements you want to make? If anyone wants to try it out, we're certainly happy to help. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, no, the I Discord think... is a nice place. I will, I will admit, it's uh, it's a Let's pretty go. funny place. Yeah, and in all honesty, I don't think I could agree with them more. It's not a project you absolutely have to use, even when you don't need it. With Paper and Purple, you might as well use them over Spigot, as it's just a drop-in replacement that has a lot of performance and customizability enhancements that are very cool to mess around with, as well as compatibility with Spigot plugins. You know, until Paper finally decides to break that somewhere soon-ish, TM. But Mindstorm isn't just a drop-in solution, but does that mean it's useless? No. 
Absolutely not. Like Matt said, if you need something that is probably more performant, custom and easily maintainable, then Mindstorm is pretty much the best choice out there. So if you are interested in a new coding project, just want to experiment with some cool stuff or whatever reason you want to try it out, feel free to check them out. But for now, I was Lunar. You are very awesome. And so you know how App Mac nowadays has like four up hits? How does that work? Their eyes are literally bionically engineered to stay open all, all the time. Why the fuck? I would like to say a special thank you to the many pebbles making this content possible. You guys make this content better and better with every month you help me make it. And a special thank you to my mountains, Walper and Farron. And last but completely not least, a super and duper thank you to Comet Speed, Hans Franz, Milhouse, and my newest mountain, Willox, for pledging to me on the mountain tier. As always, the full interview will be on the Patreon, so if you want a little bit more in-depth questions, head on over. And I'll see you all on the next one.